for users that are comfortable configuring components of the Atomic Automation Solution. This course provides a general recap of all INI files, and we explain the key sections and settings in each of them. Some, like the system name and certain ports, need to match. We'll point them out. We'll consider all the INI files, the important sections, and the individual settings. We're also going to look at the settings that need to match from one INI file to the next for the instance to work. Let's start with the infrastructure diagram. At the center of it, we find the automation engine server components. Then we have the database components with the database, the utilities, and the ODBC connection enabling component connections. We have the service manager as well as the service manager dialog on Windows. We have agents which require some configuration. Configuration is required for users to log into the solution via AWI and use analytics. Finally, communications across service managers, agents, and server components are secured using CAPKI, which has its own sections in those INI files. This is the list of components, files, and file paths. Most of them are found in the Atomic installation directory in the bin subdirectory. This includes the automation engine server components, utilities, service manager, service manager dialog, and agents. AWI is found under Tomcats, and the analytics file is found in the backend directory of analytics. Let's consider each of these. Note that most of the information we cover is fully explained in each file and in the documentation. We start with UCSRV.ini, the automation engine's configuration file. It contains by far the largest number of sections, because this is where many of the instance properties are set. Many of the settings for atomic automation are defined here initially, with the other components having to follow suits. As for most components, we have a global section. More specifically, we find the system setting for the instance. Agent files also have this setting, and they should match. As for the other components, global contains settings for the language in the files, the log file definitions and counts, SNMP definition, exception handling, and the behavior of the clients when the AA application starts. CP MSG types sets the process, either CP or primary WP, that acknowledges agent live sign signals. Cache sets maximum cache size for scripts, VARA, and MQMEM table records. AE processes can generate traces, which can be configured and fine-tuned. TCP IP is a long section that contains many settings addressing timeouts, encryption, list queues, reporting, buffer sizes, and much more. It's also here that we set the port of the primary WP. Under ports, we set the explicit CP port range. We can also set explicit ports for JCP and JWP if we decide against random allocation. Under DB service, we find the important CP setting, which points to a host and port used by agents to communicate with the automation engine. We find other settings like the authentication package properties, database connection retention, and retry times. The ODBC section contains the ODBC string for AE to connect to the database, set by the database type and other options. We also find the JDBC connection string for JWP. The JWP section contains some options for the trace flag. REST contains important information regarding the REST API connection, namely ports, SSL activation and key store, and parallel connections. Object search contains the search index folder path. We also see the CAPKI section with the certificate and private key paths, which is needed for secure communication with the service manager. Utilities provide database maintenance and administration, like loading, unloading, archiving, reorg, and more. Each utility has a matching INI file, and these vary from one to the next. Every utility INI has a global section which contains language and log settings, but contents vary based on the utility. For example, the dbload utility loads AA's data structures. dbload's INI file has a CMD setting that invokes lookandfeel.jar to access dbload's Java-based user interface. In this INI, you also find the input setting which points to the data file structures. By default, it points to the db directory in the installation package. Trace sets trace settings. The ODBC section stores the database connection settings since most utilities must connect to the database. DBLoad has an MQDB section to connect to the SQL Server message queue tables. DB Unload and Client Copy have an environment section that points to lookandfeel.jar. DB Unload and Reorg have a Reorg section to set the scope of records impacted by the utility. It allows us to set how far back we go in reorganizing records.
Exporting objects with a transport case requires DB unload, so the utility has a transport section to set its behavior. In the reporting tool, we find an options section to set options on the report itself, like the order of reported records. DB client copy copies clients across databases, so it has a source and target DB setting. Finally, DB archive requires settings for the age table. The service manager's INI file contains a few sections of notes. Global sets language and logs, as well as the service manager's ports. By now, we're also familiar with trace. The destination section sets the names and paths of the definition and command files. Finally, CAPKI encrypts communications between the service manager and the various components it manages. We find settings for the certificate, key, and cipher. The Service Manager dialog on Windows has an even more basic INI file. The most important setting is the hostname list that contains the list of all the hosts where a Service Manager is installed. This allows the dialog to connect to them. The name of the agent file varies with the type of agent. It contains many settings. In Global, the most significant setting is the agent name as it will be identified by the server. System has to match the system name as it is defined in the server INI. In addition, we find language and logs. Trace contains trace settings. We set the hostname and port of the CP and TCP IP based on the server's definitions. This allows the agent to connect to the server when enabled. You also find reconnection time settings. Agents have an authorization section which contains various settings for the authentication of the agents, including method and package. There are settings specific to file transfer processes, notably a disk space size check to accommodate the large file transfers. Then we have sections for networking and various other things like IP NAT resolution, file transfer options, and pluggable authentication modules. Agents need to start jobs. The Start CMD section is dedicated to job initiation options. It's possible to fine-tune submission execution settings and security as they relate to processes and how they're submitted to operating systems. For this, we have options user ID and UC underscore user, which define the enabled system users and what they can do. The variable section contains various settings, and CP list contains the list of server CPs and their ports. AWI is fairly straightforward. The uc4config.xml file requires a connection name and system. You also have to specify the CP hostname and ports for AWI to connect to the CP. Analytics is essentially an agent, and the settings are comparable to that of an agent. The default agent name is IA, the system name should match ucsrv.ini, and the TCP IP information for the CP and ports. Let's go back to the infrastructure diagram to consider the more notable settings. Utilities connect to the database by ways of the ODBC and JDBC connections. So does the server. The service manager handles processes that are local, but the service manager dialog does require the SM port to connect to remote service managers. Agents and analytics connect to the server via the system and CP settings and are identified with the name setting. Finally, AWI points to the server via the CP setting.